British Parliament, or Her Majesty for that matter, in whose Parliament I had sat for 25 years, that all this time I had been sitting there under Big Ben, secretly a member of a terrorist organization and harboring threats against the national security of a Commonwealth country called Canada. It's laughable, but that's what they said. That's what they said was the reason why I could not be permitted to Canada, even though I had regularly spoken in Canada in many years prior to this ban, that I had spoken in this very house, that I had never caused any threat to national security in Canada. I had never evinced any support for any terrorist organization. Even though, when they banned me, I was touring the United States of America, which I have been doing for years, even during the eight years of George W. Bush's presidency. So George Bush didn't notice what Jason <laughs> Kenney knew that I was a member of a terrorist organization. You know, you don't know whether to laugh or whether to cry, but the consequences for me were serious. And you know, defaming people, libeling people, can be a very expensive business, as Jason Kenny is going to find out, thanks to my legal team over the next months in this country. That's sort of mixed news for you, as Canadian taxpayers, <laughs> He's already cost you a pretty penny in this whole affair, and it's going to cost you more. But there's good news. Whatever compensation I win in the Canadian courts, I will spend on helping to build an even bigger anti-war movement here in Canada. And Stay here and be stay here. So, look on it as a kind of win win situation. The taxpayer will lose, but the taxpayer will also win. But what's going on here in Canada? I genuinely ask that. Not as a rhetorical question, Joe started to brief me earlier, but we, we just couldn't get the time to properly understand what's going on. Why is it that of all the countries in the world, Canada has allowed itself to become a subcontracted embassy of Benjamin Netanyahu and the most extreme government that Israel has ever had, and they have had increasingly right-wing governments. This is the only country in the world which loves Netanyahu, including Israel, by the way, including the United States. Believe me, if you could be privy to what President Obama really thinks of Netanyahu, you would blush, would be unprintable, unbroadcastable. The only place where he's regarded as the greatest thing since sliced bread is here in the cabinet room in Ottawa. Why? Prime Minister Harper said just a couple of weeks ago, Canada was ready to pay any price. That's what he said pay any price to support Netanyahu's government in Israel. Why? Well, the Canadian people asked if they wanted to pay any price. He might have added, Kennedy asked, bear any burden? Are you ready to bear any burden? Pay any price for the crimes of Netanyahu and Lieberman, the proto-fascist foreign minister in his government, I can't imagine that you are 
neither here in this hall nor in any other hall. Why, why would you? Canada's interests are not being served by this kind of monomaniacal approach to this historic and ancient, deep, profound conflict in the Middle East. In fact, Canada's interests are being damaged, its people imperiled, its interests at risk. And you don't have to take my word for that. When Canada was trounced by Portugal in the election to the Security Council of the United Nations hmm. just a month or so ago, the Prime Minister himself, Mr. Harper, said that Canada had paid a price for its unstinting support, was the way he put it, of the government of Israel. Well, why should you pay that price in your national influence? Why should you be regarded as the country that more than any other in the democratic world is banning people left, right and centre? People who want to come here to make an argument, then go home, are stopped at the border, told they're not welcome. I learned the other day, to my absolute astonishment, a woman called Amy Goodman, a Jewish liberal woman, the host of Democracy Now!, one of the most famous liberal television programs in the world, a person who, like me, by the way, spends most of their life traveling across all the countries of the earth and having a platform freely there to express herself, was stopped from coming to Canada, from New York City. Shame. Everywhere I go, I hear stories that so and so has been stopped from coming to Canada. For how much longer? Or, as Carl said, this country which was once a haven for those who refused in the US military to participate in the barbarism against the people of Vietnam is now a country trying to drive war resistors from the United States Armed Forces back to prison. Shame indeed. Shame, Shame on this government of Mr. Harper and Mr. Kenny, how much longer can the Canadians, who once had a reputation in the world that anybody would be proud of, the kinder, gentler North American state, a place where peace, where liberal values, with a small L, I mean not the capital L, what's wrong with the opposition here in this country? How can you have a parliament in which hundreds of members are paid to be the official opposition who say to the government, you want to get deeper involved in a war? You want to break your promise to the people that you made about that war? Go ahead, please. Don't even bother to debate it with us. Never mind allow us to have a vote. Talk about Tweedledee and Tweedledum. <laughs> Two cheeks of the same backside. That's Ignatiev and Harper, if you ask me. What's wrong with the Canadian media? In their reporting of this tour, I tell you there's not 20 demonstrators outside. Not 20. But if there is any coverage, of this event tomorrow, be sure that in the Canadian media, most of the coverage will be about the 20 people outside, not the 1,000 people inside, because that's been the pattern so far. You know, the only newspaper that I have read covering this tour, who properly identified the role of the Jewish Defence League and described it as a right-wing Jewish organization was the Israeli newspaper Haaretz. <laughs> Not a single Canadian paper has mentioned 
the Jewish Defense League, 